Okay, welcome to uh, another episode of Crime Pays with Bodney Dozen. Beautiful morning here at about 5,000 foot elevation, at maybe 4,500 feet. As you can see, uh, we're descending. We're walking down this way through a uh, intensely overgrown forest. That's correct. Smokey the Bear is an asshole. This is the result of fire suppression. As a result, uh, what you get, instead of low burning fires every, you know, the 10, 20, 30 years, you get these massive wildfires. If this, if someone were to light, say some jackass was smoking and just threw a cigarette down, stomped on it, but didn't fully put it out. And then a couple hours later, it smolders and lights this whole thing up. This would be a massive fire. Okay. Very, uh, and the, and the fires will go all the way up the trees. They'd probably kill everything. Uh, it just, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a bomb waiting to go off. Okay. So, at this point, uh, you know, I mean, this is, like I said, is the result of, of just suppressing every fires for so, you know, every fire, uh, for so long. Uh, and so you don't get the, instead of, you know, a succession of low burning, oh, nice pterospora right there. Instead of low burning wildfires, you get these massive eruptions, which is what we're getting now. And it is going to burn. There's no stopping it. It's going to burn no matter what. So you want to get rid of this fuel. You can see up there, you've got, uh, just very, very thick. Uh, undergrowth and down here where the canopy's finally gotten tall enough you could still see the remnants of all the old manzanitas and stuff that was growing here so uh yeah look at that that was growing here at one point so anyway poor forest management is what this is but uh regardless we're going downhill we're going towards the center of a 200,000 year old uh phreatic explosion basically a, a volcanic explosion that was a uh, uh, comprised of a lot of steam, you know, the water trickled down through the rocks, you know, water from snow melt and whatnot, and then uh, the water heated up and finally blew up. It was it was basically a steam, a volcanic explosion with a lot of steam in it. Okay, and again, it's two hundred thousand years old. So uh, the area we're in just looks like a deep hole in the ground, which is basically what it is. It's like a three hundred foot deep uh, circular crater. Kind of looks like a, a boil. That somebody lanced, you know, but instead of pus, it's filled with the uh, basaltic andesite. So, uh, all right, let's go check it out. Look at that! Look at this! This is just just weedy white furs, weedy abies con color. Which, uh, look at that! This whole thing. fire would just come through here, light it right up. Not a lot of diversity in forests like this. Not even uh, I don't even see any pterospora. No, there's some pterospora. There's always pterospora. That uh, parasitic member of the Ericaceae. Jesus Christ, I just. Brown and crispy! There we go. So you can see it's opening up a little bit. Maybe it'll be a little bit uh, more diversity of plant life. I'm sure the fungal diversity is pretty good here. I got a nice penstem in there. So as you can see, we are indeed just in a deep fucking hole. Is the other uh, side of the rim over there, and everything, uh, you know, two hundred thousand years has been enough time for a uh, oh, nice iris. Two hundred thousand years has apparently been enough time for a uh, forest to grow here. Of course, hiding, uh, hiding, you know, any fact, any uh, observation that there, is that cyclodenia. Is it second? No, maybe not. I don't know. Hiding any uh, any hint of the fact that you are indeed in a uh, volcanic crater. Nice. Okay, here's Cyclodenia humilis, which is a, uh, you can see the follicles develop in there. <clears throat> Obvious giveaway that it's in the, uh, the Apocynaceae, the milkweed family. Okay, too bad the flowers aren't going off. They are stunners when you see them. Little uh, pink... Uh, Pink, pink Corollas with the five fused lobes, five fused petals. Even that color, though, is pretty nice. Look at a nice venation. Okay, not really a psych ward green. More kind of like a, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the nasty Brax candy that you might find, you know, on your grandma's coffee table in the uh, 80s or 90s. Okay, still a beautiful color, though. Contrasts nicely with the, uh, the duff right there, the duff. This looks like another member of the Apocynaceae. Apocynum androsema folium. Nothing in flower, though. It's just the smell of pine. Now, penstemon is a fucking 
tricky genus, okay? You can't really go by leaves. You can't go by flowers so much. They all kind of look the same. We got two different species here. We got this uh, this little guy right here. You see these these tiny, uh, narrow flowers. And then, uh, where'd it go? Over here, you got an entirely different species, but they, they look the same, okay? I mean, to me, they don't, because I've been familiar with the genus. But if you just got familiar with the genus, they all look the same to you, you know? So what you got to do, you got to dissect the flower and uh, I'll show you the traits you got to look for here. I got one dissected right here. See that? So let's zoom in and let's uh, use the hand lens and uh, see what we're, see what, see what we got to look at over there. Okay, so you see, what we're looking at now is we're looking at the bottom lip of the Corolla. Remember, you got three fused petals on the bottom and then you got two fused petals on the top. I ripped those off. Then uh, the style, of course, is, oh, it's still in there, actually. The style is that shorter appendage with nothing on top of it. Okay, as opposed to the four white appendages that have those uh, darker, kind of like dark purple anthers on top of them. And then that long white part in the middle that you would normally assume is the style, it's actually the staminode. It's a sterile stamen that uh, I believe all penstemons have. So uh, anyway, if you could see that still, what you, those darker things, those are the anthers. Okay, and uh, you know, penstemons are notorious for having saccate anthers. And what that means is it's basically an anther sac. It's like a little, uh, you know, package, a little packet that the opens, that the hisses, and lets out the uh, the pollen inside, okay? And that's one of the diagnostic factors you got to look at. You got to look at if that staminode has a fuzz on it or not, and this one does not. This is not the, it, it's not the beard tongue that the, the common name of the genus refers to. That staminode has no uh, fuzz on it, no beard. But you also got to look at uh, how the anthers dehiss. What that means is how they open, okay? So when the anthers open, it looks like a hot dog bun. Picture a hot dog bun that's, uh, you know, not open yet, and then one that's uh, fully open waiting for a hot dog. Does that seem kind of grotesque? That's okay. We could just keep rolling with it. So you can see these anther sacs dehiss distally. What that means, distal means, as opposed to proximal, proximal would be at the point of attachment to where the anther sac attaches to that uh, filament, that white filament, and this will, of course, would be apart. Some anthers are away from where the anther attaches. So these dehiss distally. I'll, go, I'll show you with the hand lens uh, in a minute there. But uh, the, there's another type of uh, anther dehiscence you get, which is when they fully dehiss, which is like a fully splayed open hot dog bun, okay? Whereas, you know, proximal or distally uh, dehissing would be like a hot dog bun that's pinched at one end. Like someone's holding it in their fist, okay? It just, I'm telling you, man, it just gets more loot as we go along. Let's look at these uh, anthers up close with the hand lens. Okay, so you could see the hot dog bun is indeed pinched here. Okay, you could also see that hot dog bun has some hair on it. Isn't that kind of gross, huh? Just like you're getting some sort of nasty, uh, you know, uh, concession at the Wrigley Field or something. You know, maybe some guy, uh, you get like a demented... Uh, line cook or something who's been uh, fucking with the food a little bit so those those hot dog buns have some uh hairs on them actually those hairs might be coming off the white filament but either way you get what's going on is that hot dog bun is uh dehissing proximally it's kind of a convoluted ass explanation of uh penstemon character traits that you got to pay attention to but you get it you get the idea is that stamina that white bar with no anther on the end of it in the middle right there is that white bar that white uh appendage is does it have a beard on it or not and do those uh, anthers dehiss fully like a splayed open hot dog bun distally like it's uh pinched at uh, the point of attachment to the filament or proximally is that hot dog bun pinched at the the end that's not attached to the filament so there you go now you, now you, you know that now you get a hand lens you can look at any goddamn uh, penstemon that you so choose you know, and given how ubiquitous this genus is all over the American West, and even in the Midwest, and I believe there's a couple species on the East Coast, it wouldn't hurt to know, okay? If you want to take a closer look, get your mind off some of the bummer shit you might have going on in your life, and you probably have a lot, like most of us these days. I mean, look, notice how those filaments curve up. Notice how those stamens curve up towards the top of the crawler, dude. It's another uh, distinct character trait of the penstemons right there. So you got one species, this one, and then you got that other narrow bastard over there. But, you know, they to a novice, they just look a, a lot alike. And, I, you know, I can't say I blame you. The nice uh, cyclodenium back there, too. Oh, look, it's Kellogia with those hairy ovaries. 
beneath the flowers. Do you like hairy ovaries? Look at it. Just like, uh, I believe, Gallium has the same thing going on. And they're both in the same family, the coffee family, Rubiaceae. You get your four petals right there, four pink petals, and the somewhat the exerted style. And you get the, where the exerted stamens, too. Fucking flowers are too tiny. You know, I gotta, I gotta get them glasses or something. I don't know. You know, pretty common, pretty common in the uh, yellow pine forest. So the diversity here is, uh, there's not, there's not too much of it. You basically just got your typical, uh, your typical Northern California volcanic legacy yellow pine forest. You got your Arctostaphylos patula, your uh, Ceanothus volutinus. You got some lodgepole pines, two needle pine right there. All right there too, with the tiny cones. See how the tiny cones over there, nice. Got some uh, Abies con colors, some white fur on the side too. The only thing that's especially remarkable about this area is that we're basically inside a deep pit. You can see the tree line way up there. We're in a, a 300 foot deep uh, little crater, okay? Which again was a phreatic. Phreatic just means of or relating to groundwater. A phreatic volcanic explosion 200,000 years ago. So this area is still, you can still consider volcanically active. I mean, Mount Lassen only blew up about 100 years ago. So it could still go off, you know, here's hoping. But uh, basically what happened was, you know, groundwater seeped in through some fissures and cracks in, a, in the rock and the earth's crust, hit that magma. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it set off the explosion or just uh, erupted with that explosion of magma, but it was it was obviously enough to create a mile, maybe a half mile wide a crater in the ground, which is now j just looks like a big zit, a big deep hole on a uh, top topographic map. And so, uh, you know, I figured, what the fuck, why not, why not come uh, dick around in it for a while? Could be nice. Who knows what you'd find? You know, diversity is probably not going to be too high. Due to the recent disturbance of, uh, you know, a giant violent explosion, but uh, you never, you never know. There's a plant called the Dimeresia, which is a very tiny and super rare member of the sunflower family that does like to grow in some of these volcanic craters, but I doubt it's here. It's too tiny and there's too much duff on the ground for it. But uh, I wouldn't have wanted to be here 200,000 years ago, though, I'll tell you that. We go on the uh, edge of the crater, it opened up a little bit, and it's just uh, more volcanic sand. Okay? Volcanic shit's always weird. You always go to these desolate volcanic areas in Northern California. You're gonna you just they feel kind of spooky almost. Look at the edge of it. Yeah, I guess we're, we're pretty deep. We're we're pretty deep in that. Just in a big volcanic zit. Nice eriogonum. Get some nice uh, diatheria canescence. All right, well that's all I got for this morning. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Here's a nice uh, little cliff, little uh, wall of the crater over there. You could really, you really get the uh, impression that we are indeed in a big hole uh, from this vantage point. Got some garia, some silk tassel right there. So got some penstem and dubarii up there. Interesting thing you can see here is how the lava cooled into these uh, these little plate formations. Okay, and andesite does that a lot when basalt cools. You uh, typically get these columnar formations like Devil's Post Pile, you know, but here it's uh, it's a little bit different. I'm not sure if that's just because of the higher silica content or what, but the andesite does indeed uh, cool into these kind of fragmented plates. You got a very nice uh, sound to them when they, uh, when they drop, you know, kind of like a porcelain toilet being uh, smashed on uh, some concrete or something. of little cracking crevice in the uh, the andesite right there has uh, been exploited. Actually, this looks a little bit more uh, iron rich, like maybe it's a little bit uh, more basaltic. There's tons of penstemon. Tons of penstemon, silk tassel, and you got some uh, wild ginger, which uh, actually is not related to true ginger at all. It's more related to, uh, more closely related to the Dutchman's pipe in the Aristolochiaceae. It's a uh, oserum right there. When it flowers, it flowers from the base, beneath the leaves. And this is mildly toxic too. But of course, I think I think there's some Etsy witches that make potions out of it. Hopefully they know what they're doing. 
Because, uh, again, their whole family, Aristolochiaceae, can be very toxic. How the fuck are we going to get out of here? It's all this, all this brush. Here's an interesting one. It's uh, the flowers long since over and done. But you can see that the bulbous caudiciform uh, root right there still alive. This is a parasite, as you can probably tell. It doesn't seem to be even any remnant of green in there because it doesn't produce chlorophyll. This is a member of the oral bancaceae. Uh, it appears to be a species of Capsiopsis. Really, Capsiopsis, uh, I believe there's only one, Capsiopsis strobilacea. But, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. I almost thought it was a Sarcodes at first, which, of course, parasitizes fun fungi. But this, being a member of the oral bancaceae, the quote broom rape family, not sure what's up with that name, don't really care. Uh, <clears throat> just a weird fucking name. The oral bancaceae, of course, don't parasitize fungi, they parasitize plants. And uh, Capsiopsis is known to parasitize members of the Ericaceae, like Madrone and uh, Arctostaphylos, right here. So, it's weird, I've never actually, you know, dug one up before and seen that weird ass root. Mm, I wonder what it's good for, is it healing? Is it a healing bomb? What did indigenous people use it for? Is it healing? Is it healing? Can I make a potion out of it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a potion and sell it for 40 bucks on, uh, on the interweb. What do you think of that? Huh? This is, uh, this is not fun stuff to walk through, especially if you're wearing shorts. <laughs> Fucking, this is what they must make uh, leather chaps for, you know? Aside from, uh, they're not just for cruising in leather daddy bars, okay? There's also a practical application of those uh, assless leather pants. And it's probably just, you know, to uh, protect your uh, legs when you're, uh, you know, bustling through uh, Manzanita with no trail on the edge of a volcanic crater. How about that? Okay, per uh, OSHA regulation, when uh, tromping through a Manzanita brush, you got to wear your uh, safety eyewear as well as a respirator to protect you from inhaling it too much of the uh, decaying wood dust. Okay. And, uh, fuck, Jesus, this is, this is awful. This is really, uh, <coughs> I'm uh, looking at the large grain size here, thinking that uh, it's kind of odd because this is an extrusive igneous rock. It's all lava, and uh, it should have a relatively small grain size. Then I realize it's not actual uh, mineral grains. It's little bits of, of glass, which uh, would make sense because volcanic glass itself is an extrusive igneous rock as well. Anyway, over here. If I can make it through here without uh, breaking my ass, you can see we got some uh, Copsiopsis. I'm going to hold on to this hollow discus to a fucking keep myself out of We got some uh, Copsiopsis strobilacea. It's old, uh, but it's still going off. Remember the oral bancaceae? It's parasitizing this uh, species of prunus, it seems. And uh, here you go. There's a nice little bits of uh, volcanic glass and uh, andesite and what the shit. Oh. Anyway. Good nice. You can see the old stamen still holding on right there. Let's pull this bastard up. The ground cone. These are fucking it's supremely weird looking when they're going off. And very beautiful as well. And of, of course, a chlorophyllus, since they're parasitiz parasitizing the plant. Look at all the seeds coming out. Okay? Not to be confused with Sargodes sanguinea, Ericaceae, which parasitizes a fungus in the ground. These actually parasitize plants. Capsiaps. You gotta see them when they're in full bloom, though. That'll brown and crispy in the month of August, so... I'm going to help it get its seed around, and uh, there you go, look at that. That's a nice big, the big seeds right there. <laughs> hey, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. No! Hey! No! No! Stop! Hey! God damn it! Stop it! Jack! No! <laughs> you are a bad boy! You're a bad boy! No more pepperoni! Listen to me! 